Here in Australia, we change Prime Ministers so quickly these days, it's hard to keep up. So if you didn't know, the new PM is this guy. This is getting to know ScoMo. <laughs> the first thing to know about Scott Morrison is that he's just a big boy at heart. I'm a boy from the suburbs here in Sydney. Who's got a bit of a dandruff problem. <laughs> he's a simple man who loves dogs, eggs, Dogs, rugby, and dogs. He's the first Prime Minister to really embrace baseball caps. And he still looks up to his childhood heroes, like Daryl the Big Man Broman. Hey, Big Man, it's great to be here. And Carl Stefanovic. Carl, you've been through some torrid events in your career, and look at you, you're still, you know, Australia's hero. He's a huge fan of Tay Tay. That's the best result in 30 years, and uh, going back to when Taylor Swift was born. And the Muppets. There was a Muppet Show a couple of weeks ago. Parliament resembled a Muppet Show. You know, a Muppet Show. The curtain has come down on that Muppet Show. You say Muppets, how do you unite a bunch of Muppets? Well, if there's one man who knows which direction this country is going, it's a man who knows who he is. <laughs> so there you have it, our new Prime Minister. Right up until he gets knifed. Bye, ScoMo. <laughs> You from the media, tell the Prime Minister to go and get from Nelligan. We really enjoy doing this head. Thank you very much. Sure. I've lost seven houses already in Nelligan. I'm not going to lose any more, you head. Stand down now. You don't deserve to govern. You knew this was coming. It's been coming for a few years. You've been totally ignorant of it. And now we're wearing your problem. Tell the PM to come and meet me. Paul Parker from Nelligan. Meet you any day, pal. You're out, son. You are out. Good night. An uncomfortable walkabout for Australia's Prime Minister feeling the heat from fire-ravaged communities. You're not welcome, you Every single time this area has a flood or a fire, we get nothing. They are angry and frustrated about the speed and spread of resources. Don't come back. You're not welcome. Pretty much driving Scott Morrison out of town. Before he left, he surveyed the damage but failed to accept criticism that Australia should be doing more to reduce climate changing carbon emissions. You know, I mean, we've over this last couple of days, we've had volunteer firefighters who've been outlining very clearly the issues. Not enough equipment. They're paying for fuel and everything out of their um out of their own pocket. You know, we've got a Prime Minister that thought going off to Hawaii was a good idea. And Australians, I want you to think about that for a minute, okay? Every politician's a fucking parasite. Every single one of them. You know, he's going off to Hawaii on your money, folks. Your money. Over half a million bucks a year, that little bastard's earning. Over half a million dollars a year. And so I sat down today and I worked it out. Because, you know, a lot of Australians are on about 25 bucks an hour. A lot of Australians are on a lot less than that. But I just did it on 25 bucks an hour, you know. And that equates to less than 26 cents per minute. Do you hear that? You get up every day, you drive to work, you sit in the queues because the roads are fucking dog's breakfast. And you do all that and you go to work and do your job less than 26 cents per minute in the hand you know because you're 25 bucks an hour in reality becomes 17 dollars 50 after you've paid your payg and uh, out of your 17 dollars 50 per hour that becomes 29 cents out of that 29 cents you're going to pay 10 percent gst on everything you fucking buy so that brings you down to 26 cents per minute and then out of that, you're going to pay all the other incidental taxes like rates. And, you know, if you buy yourself a beer, you're paying alcohol tax. If you smoke, you're paying tobacco tax. If you're putting fuel in your car, you're paying fuel tax. All out of those 26 cents. I don't understand. I don't understand why Australians aren't screaming. I don't understand it. You know, I mean, as if parliamentary pedophile protecting suppression orders aren't bad enough. 
everyday Australians are getting screwed every day. And the majority of Australians still are like, oh, no, what's the point in writing to our politicians? Well, I'll tell you what the fucking point is. It's called turning the heat up on their seat, okay? If they rock up to work tomorrow and they've got 15,000 emails from every person in their electorate complaining about the state of our country, be it the education system, water for our farmers, be it the amount of interest we pay on things that we borrow, be it health care... The, the aged pension debacle, all that shit, man. Start talking directly to your politicians. Like, seriously, I don't understand why everyone's quiet. Why is everyone quiet? Fucking inundate these people with emails. Send one every day. You know, I mean, Jesus, we pay these people an extraordinary amount of money every bloody day. And you're going to work for less than 26 cents per minute. I don't understand why you're not angry, Australia, I really don't. Surely I can't be the only Australian that is angry at the injustice. God, I bloody well hope not. The fires in Australia are showing no sign of letting up and are said to be going to get worse. So far they've burnt down most of New South Wales, most of Victoria, huge fires in South Australia, and they have murdered over one billion of our beautiful little animals. 30,000 koalas on kangaroo island alone folks the boys are doing this and you're about to see how and why they're doing it and you can go peacefully but you better go quickly because we'll do it any way we can and we'll release the guns if we have to but either way you look at it scott morrison and you parasites in canberra the people are coming you're fucked <laughs>